QuickBooks Online. Save customization or memorize reports. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the option that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're going to be using the United States version and verify that we're not a robot. I'm not a robot, but I crank stuff out like a machine. Anyways. We're going to zoom in, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 125% on the zoom in and the cog drop down. We've, we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views in order to get a feel for where things are located in each of them. Right click it on the tab up top to duplicate it so we can put reports in them as we do every time. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again as the tab to the right thinking we're going to tab to the middle reports on the left and open the balance sheet and then as that's thinking tab to the right reports on the left open up the p to the l the profit to the loss the income statement and then i'm going to close the hamburger otherwise known as the ham boogie and change the range from 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it tab to the left middle tab close in the ham boogie and change in that range in from 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it that's the setup process that we do every time we've been looking at the major balance sheet report remembering that the balance sheet and income statement are the primary financial statement reports all other reports for the most part giving more information on one or multiple line items of these two major financial statement reports. Now we want to think about memorizing these reports. And typically you would think about this in the context of having your reports sorted for internal use, possibly in the way that would be most efficient for you, as well as reports that will be used for external use, possibly as a bookkeeper to give those reports to the client. Or if you're working internally in a uh, accounting office, the grouping of the reports that you might provide periodically, say to a supervisor. I'll primarily be thinking in the context of a bookkeeper that's providing this information, say to a client on a periodic basis. So in that case, then as you adjust your reports, you might then uh, want to customize those reports and group them in, into a category, save them. And in the desktop version, by the way, it's called memorized. So in the online version, we have save customization. I don't know why they are differentiating those terminologies. I think memorized rules off the tongue a little bit better than save customization, but you get the idea. So we can customize it and we can save the customization so that when I generate the report again in a future period, hopefully I can just change the date range all else formatted for us. That will save us time. Now on the internal reports, oftentimes the default might be, you know, suitable for us, but Maybe we want to change like the negative numbers to be bracketed or something like that, even on uh, the internal reports. So we can then think about those things that we think are most efficient for that purpose. And then the external reports where I might do things, for example, taking the panties off, I like to do for external reporting oftentimes. And then I might do some comparative analysis and whatnot with the external reports. So let's think about how we might group them then. I'm going to do a little customization. So let's customize this. And let's say that we're going to say, here's the range. Let's say I'll keep the panties on for the internal report, but I still like to see the negative numbers as bracketed and red possibly. And then maybe on the, on the headers and footers, I'll say this is the balance sheet and I'll say this is balance sheet internal for, for internal use. I'm going to say, internal balance sheet and maybe I can just remove the date time or maybe I like the date and time but not the report basis for the internal report because I think that's not really necessary and then let's run that so not much change 
on the internal report, except those negative numbers kind of pop out to us. So if I want to save that, then I can then save that up top and say, I'm going to save the customization. And this time, instead of just saving it into the customized area, I'm going to make its own group. So I'm going to say that this is going to be a group for an internal, internal reports. Now, if you have multiple people, you might put it under your name as well. So, so if you have multiple users uh, using the QuickBooks file, logging in, you might save the internal reports under you know your name and then have them different possibly than the external reports. So I'm going to add the group. And so there is the group. So I think that's right. And then we're going to say share with. Now, do I want to share the, the, when you think about sharing the reports, if you have multiple users in the QuickBooks system, you might be sharing with other people. And you can also think about sharing like the report structure. If you have a particular report structure with into it, if you would think that uh, that might be something for other users could be useful. I'm not going to be sharing with anybody here. I'm just going to save that. And then I'm going to go back to the first tab. I like to refresh the first tab now with this little refresh button so that I can then uh, note that there's hopefully it has been updated in my report center on the left hand side. I'm going to go now to the customized reports. And now I've got this item under the customized reports. Now, sometimes it's a little glitchy with the report. So I went back out over to the reports here and made sure to add this report so we added the group and now i can see it in the added group here so i'm going to save it again and try to run it back over here back to the tab to the left and refresh it again and i should get a group this time that it's going to be in so there's our group so now i've got my internal reports in uh this uh grouping now if i want to make so so that could be a useful tool now for external reports, you might have different formatting for external reports that you're going to give to say clients. There's a couple ways that you can deal with those external reports. We'll talk more about how to group them and put them together, but you can, you can save them this way and then try to attach them to an email or put, zip them together as a PDF to provide, give them to someone on a cloud drive, or possibly you can use Excel, which we'll look at that method to export them to Excel. And that's a way that you can get them all on one PDF file with the help of a PDF printer. Uh, QuickBooks also has this manage reports area over here, which can give you some kind of nice formatting for the reports. It's a little bit restricted in some ways, but that's another method that you can, you can try to make your reports look a little bit more professional when providing them to clients. We'll talk more about that in a future presentation. For now, let's just think about how you might group all of your reports because remember on the balance sheet reports we talked about the fact that we could have a whole bunch of different balance sheet reports that we might want to group together and provide to people at the end of the month so how can we make that system as easy as possible maybe we make a group that would be month end reports maybe we have a different group for a year end reports or quarter end reports and and then maybe we even number them so that every month I can just basically go into those reports, change the date range, and then provide them to the client in a way that is efficient uh, and uh, nice and clean and easy. So let's, let's go back on over here and say, okay, maybe the first report we give is that summary balance sheet. So I'm gonna go into the plus button here, go to the reports, and I'm gonna say standard report. Let's go into that summary balance sheet, which is, right here balance sheet summary and i'm going to close the hamburger and do our customization so on this report i'm going to say that we want to uh, remove the pennies the negative numbers and red and then on the footer i'm going to get rid of the date time report basis and it's called a, a balance sheet summary maybe maybe i prefer it to be called summary balance sheet possibly let's try that just just to change it and so if i save that there's the report i can change the end date to 12 31 22 and run it so now if i want to if i want to save this as an as an external report that maybe i'm going to generate every month then when i save to a customization i'm going to add a group actually let's do it this way add a group and the group is going to be month end reports so i'm going to call them month end reports i'm going to add the group 
and then I'm gonna select the group month end reports. So it's a little bit, you gotta make sure to add it so that it's in there and then select the group. And then I'm also gonna number it and just so it won't be in alphabetical order in that group because I would like this one to be printed first or the first thing that we represent. So one way I can do that is to, is to number it. I'm gonna save it. And then if I go back to the first tab and I was to refresh and then go down to the reports, then go to the customized reports. So now we've got these month end reports. Let's just make a, a one or two more just to see how that would work. If I go then back on over here and let's go to our normal balance sheet now. I'm gonna to go to the reports. I'm gonna to go to the standard reports, normal balance sheet. And if we made like a comparative balance sheet, let's just do a quick comparative balance sheet or let's just do the quarters and take this to 123122 and run it. So now we've got our quarter by quarter. I can customize it and say I want without the cents, brackets, red, and then I'm gonna call it now a comparative balance sheet or balance sheet, balance sheet by quarter, something like that. And then get rid of the date, time, report basis, save it. And then if I memorize this, I can, I can say save the memorization. I'm gonna put this into my month end reports. I'm gonna name it the second report, imagining that this is the second report that we wanna to batch together. And then I can save that information. And then at the end of each month, I can go into, I'm gonna to go to the first tab, refresh it and go down to my reports and then custom reports. Now I've got my month end reports in this nice little drop down. And at the end of the month, possibly then I can just, I could just go in here and print these out in order. And then that will help me to group them possibly to batch them possibly with an email, possibly with a, a zipped file, possibly with a cloud drive, possibly we can then put them on one PDF file with the help of Excel and a PDF printer, which we'll test out in a future presentation. So that's the general idea that I just wanna get across here. You might have those internal reports that have formatting that's a little bit different than the defaults. And then you might have the external reports, which are often gonna have a little bit different formatting. And then the question is, how are you gonna be grouping those external reports? You might have month end reports. You might have slightly different reports for the quarter end, because now you've got a full quarter that you can run quarter reports. And you might have different reports, say for year end because now you've got a whole year's worth of data, which could have a more complex batch of reports dealing with uh, the year information. So uh, that's the general idea of that. We'll talk more about how to possibly group these reports uh, and, and present them in a future presentation. But for now, let's open up the cog and let's switch to the business view and let's just look at where we've been located under the business view. So the reports, of course, are in the business overview and the reports. And then we know that the that's the reports. That's basically the only place that we have been going to, right? So that's right here. So that's where the reports are under the business view.